So let's start off by taking a look at the packaging of the Distress Crayons. They come in what looks like a marker style. There is a detachable cap that has a little clip. Not that I think you would necessarily use it, but it's there for your convenience. And you can see that the color is indicated both on the twistable end and on the cap. Uh, you can even park the cap so you don't lose it. And then in order to dispense the product, you are just going to twist it up like so. So it's easy to twist up and back. Now there is no real odor to this product, so if you're sensitive, it should not bother you at all. But it does say it's for adult use only and to keep out of the reach of children, but it is non-toxic. Now let me just show you what a brand new one looks like so that you can get an idea of what the nib is like. It is kind of almost uh, pre-sharpened for you, like so. And I'm gonna go ahead and move this one all the way up so you can see exactly how much product is included. So there you go, that's about as much as you get. It's a little less than the size of my pinky, but you can see in relation to the barrel how much actual product you get. Okay, so let's go ahead and just take a look at how the color actually applies to paper. Now this is a watercolor paper and it glue, glides very smoothly right onto the top. Um, it is very much like a very creamy chapstick or uh, a lip balm. You can see here that I'm actually going to put one color over another so you can get an idea of how they blend. And to me, they don't blend as much as they layer. There seems to be a lot of media for the amount of pigment, and so that's why it glides on so nicely. And maybe it doesn't blend as much as, like I said, it kind of overlaps in a color family. I do find that the color goes down pretty quickly, and uh, I find myself cranking up the nibs pretty frequently here. I seem to go through a lot of the product each time I use it. So here I'm just gonna give you the whole kind of rainbow of the Brights package. Now you do notice as we look at it up close that there are these little clumps, if you will. Uh, we're just gonna effectually call them boogers. Um, and that's just from pressing down on the nib. If you notice, I can actually use my finger and just squish that product right back down into the paper and make it go away, just like so. So that being said, I wanted to show you that you can use your finger and blend it out, but not a whole lot. There, once you apply the product down to the paper, it really kind of wants to stay there, um, and it will take water to actually move it around for you. But we'll look at that next. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this brush, it's just got a little bit of plain water on it, and I wanna show you what happens when you move the brush through the product here, through the Distress Crayons. I'm just gonna kind of drag it through like so. And you'll notice here on the other end, you can get it to blend when you add water. And I'm just gonna work it here a little bit so you can see firsthand how much of the product actually lifts and moves. And really, in my opinion, it's not a whole lot. Um, I think they're gonna be great for layering because they don't really wanna move around so much um, after you put them down. Once you've put them down and they're in the paper, they do have a tendency to absorb in. But I'm gonna show you what it looks like on some different surfaces as well. All right, so this first sample is just the Distress Crayons right on top of a piece of smooth cardstock. You see that again, I got a little bit of those uh, color boogers, if you will, but I can smooth those out. Um, the colors blend a little bit when you rub them with your finger. They work even more so when you rub them with a baby wipe. You will notice though, when you use a baby wipe, it will lift the color, um, I don't wanna say all the way off, but it, it will lift a lot of the color off for you. Um, you can see where the pink actually stained the paper and then I layered the yellow on top of it. So you do also get almost like a, an architectural effect um, whatever you put down first is going to stain the paper first and then you can layer other colors on top. And if you don't like that effect, you are redeemed because you can go right on top and layer more. Again, this is a very um, smooth, creamy, gel-like consistency 
and it's really easy to just layer them on top of each other. Also, the colors are very true to the Tim Holtz Distress Color, so if you love this color palette, you're going to be very excited to add this to your collection. So something I think is really fun to do with Distress Crayons, and you can do with this, is work onto a wet surface. You can take a little bit of water and put it on a piece of watercolor cardstock, as I'm doing here, and then go ahead and just color right into it. And what that will do is cause the pigments to separate from the media and start to blend out right away. And then you can use your finger to get a really nice, pretty wash of color. I thought that was really nice. And here it is wet, and then you can see here how it's dry. And you can get some of those swirls and um, you know textures from using your finger right on the paper. Okay, so here's one thing I noticed. I went ahead and tried stamping on top of the Distress Crayons. So I laid down my color, I let it dry for a while, and then I used a memento pad to stamp on top. And I noticed that even after letting it sit for a while, I was still able to um, smear the color around. So we may need to experiment with what kind of ink works best on top. My thought is that maybe using a pigment ink with, followed by a heat embossing would be the best way of stamping on top of Distress Crayons. But it does make like fun background. And then the last little sample I want to share with you today is uh, I tried coloring on top of a stamp and then misting it with water and then doing stamps. So this is stamp one, the second one, and the third one. And I'm not really in love with Distress Crayons for direct stamping because there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of pigment here. Um, the water kind of made it dissolve and so it was really light and watercolor. Now it's a great kind of watercolory tone on tone effect but it's not really opaque so just so you know this is one way to use it but you may or may not like the results okay so let's go through just a few more samples before we wrap up and I wanted to show you what happened when you applied the distress crayons to just regular cardstock and then drug a wet paintbrush through it. You can see that the color actually does start to lift almost immediately. Um, and so you can get some fun effects by applying water. However, I did try just sprinkling water onto watercolor cardstock and I really didn't get much of a, a lift with that kind of like sprinkly technique. Um, so it doesn't work quite as well as distress stain stamp pads for that. Um, but like I said, if you use the paintbrush, you can get it to lift up a little more. You just need more water. Now on this sample, this is watercolor cardstock, and what I did was I put down a layer of the Distress Crayons, and then put down a stencil, and I lifted it up using a baby wipe. Now this is something that Tim does on a lot of his videos, and you can probably see it on our Tim Holtz channel here on crafttestimonies.com, but you get some really gorgeous effects by using the wet baby wipe through the stencils. This is a lot of fun and is great for cards, mixed media, etc. Just keep in mind that these are always going to be water reactive and so uh, you may want to seal them if you're going to do other wet media on top. Now speaking of different substrates, this is cardstock coated with clear gesso and what I found was uh, that if you took a wet baby wipe to it or a wet paintbrush, um, it would almost completely erase. So that gesso seals the surface and it makes it move around, but it also, if you're you know, too heavy handed, you can actually erase it. And speaking of erasing, I do not recommend that you use this on Upo. It will stain it a little bit, but um, because it doesn't absorb in, if you wipe it with a baby wipe, it just pretty much all goes away. Now here's a little sample I wanted to share with you. Um, if you go ahead and use gesso, uh, you're gonna, and this is white gesso, you get some really interesting effects. So I, it was gesso and dry, and then I rubbed Distress Crane over the top, and it's the sample on this side. You can see that it actually left the gesso pretty light, almost uh, lifted it off completely, but then you get all of the color around it. So um, unlike this other sample, which this product stained the gesso, the Distress did not stain the gesso quite as much. Lastly, I wanted to just show you what the Distress Crayons look like on a black surface. 
So you notice here that you definitely can see they show up pretty nicely. They're not 100% vibrant um, because it has such a high ratio of media versus the actual pigment, but they really do look nice on a dark surface. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and informative. And if you have any questions about the product, please leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, just let me know why in a comment so that way I can continue to make better videos for you. Thank you so much for watching and have a crafty day.